Hi everybody. I just wanted to give you this really cute short read that I did. The situation was really interesting because I have always been interested in the case of Lacey Peterson, the uh, woman who was murdered by her husband Scott Peterson, and I was planning on doing a reading about her. But when I meditated and I could feel Nicole, she had other ideas. So she had brought me this one <clears throat> celebrity comedian uh, a couple times before. And one time he was around for the whole day waiting. And he was really funny, very cynical. And, you know, then he left, of course, because I was busy working on something else. So here I was planning on doing Lacey Peterson. And Nicole had different ideas. And she's like, nope. And then she, there was George Carlin again. And I'm not kidding. And I've never been, you know, this giant fan. Um, you know, I've watched a couple things and think, yeah, okay, he's funny. But, you know, I just, you know, I'm not super over familiar with, with him or, or anything. And um, so she brings him through. And he was telling me jokes, which was making me really laugh. I mean, he was really funny. And I'm sure I bastardized those, like, obviously. But it's like... And I'm like, oh my God, this guy is hilarious, right? And then all of a sudden he's bringing somebody else out onto the stage. Um, and it's not a big audience, it's just me, but he still was on a stage and he, and he was practicing his jokes on me. And then he goes and brings this other guy and he leads him by the hand out into the stage. And this guy is the kid from this comedy show, Saved by the Bell. And I was calling him Skeezer, Geezer, Weezer, I don't know. Like, I do not even have television reception by choice. So I'm not really into these TV shows, right? And this guy, I'm like, oh, and, um, you know, what's he doing? Who is this? And it looks like this guy, right, from this TV show, only, of course, grown up. And um, the guy was super serious. Like, I am i haven't even edited it yet. I'm gonna have to hear what he said. I just remember he was like super serious. And um, and I didn't even know that he had passed or anything. And so for me, as a medium, later, I mean, I'm jumping ahead, but it's real confirmation for me as a medium. Then I'm right on target and LinkedIn properly, and this is what I believe it is. And, um, so what happened, he was super serious, and then finally I was like, I want to hear something funny again. Like, that guy was not making jokes. He was he was making really serious c comments. And then, what happened? I don't remember after that. So let's just get into it. Here's the reading that I did that my daughter brought me, George Carlin. Promise, swear to God, I'm not just doing this to do it. Um, and like I said, so, oh, this was it. After... Let me see. After the reading, I looked the guy up. And at first I didn't see anything that said he had died. And so, um, but it, I did see one saying he was going around doing stand-up comedy. And I'm like, oh, cool. Well, you know, I'm glad he's alive or whatever. It's weird that he came to me like that. But then, further, like, Googling, um, he had died. He did cross. In fact, I think he might have crossed this year. I'll have to double check that. So you can hear the reading. You can see what you think. You know, it is what it is. But at the same time, it's very real. I stand by it. I stand by George Carlin. I stand by this other guy. Um, I can't remember his name exactly. But I will put it on the... Uh, I'll put it up here when I, when I finish editing. Okay, I hope you enjoy this, and I hope you have a great 4th of July weekend, and um, practice love always. I love you guys. I appreciate all of my regular... Oh, oh, could you please subscribe? So if you subscribe, you hit the notification bell, uh, leave a comment and press a like, then YouTube will recommend it to other people. And this is what I'm getting dozens of people writing to me and saying that they've pressed the notification bell and they're not being notified. So maybe double check. Maybe even if it says pressed, unpress it and then press it again. And because I'm going to start putting up a lot more videos and I hope you join me. 
and I want to do some kind of fun videos as well as um, not only these very very serious ones all right take care I love you guys bye so we're gonna do George Carlin. we're gonna invite him depends if he's got a show to him. he does shows in heaven he's starting to tell me a joke did you know he said, did you know Let's see. Ford Motor Plant used to put out some amount of automobiles a month. And then they had to raise the minimum wage. You know what the number one problem people in America have? Complacency. <laughs> that's what he's saying. So that's what, so that's what George Carlin said. <laughs> he said, you know what the number one problem people in America have? Complacency. <laughs> That's what he said. He's funny. Oh, he just he said something before that too, but I forgot what. So if they want to put it back through, they can, or we'll just see. I just let it clear and see what I get. Okay, so I was running down the road one day. And then he's kind of thinking of changing it to going down the road, cause cause he. Wouldn't it be caught running on a road he could drive an automobile? The taxes are too high. He's telling me something else, but I can't quite understand it. I'll just let it clear and so you can blend his energy better. You know what they call an influencer on TikTok? It sounded like he said snock. You know why? You know why that is? Some snot nosed kid. <laughs> I see. Some snot no skin. <laughs> He's so funny. Okay, let's see. I, I'm not sure. <laughs> He's trying to say the rest, but it's like going too fast for me. To say. Watches YouTube and decide he wants to be a star, but then he doesn't want to put that much into it, so they invented TikTok. <laughs> that way, that way, nobody will insult you if you can't make a movie over 30 seconds. That's what he's saying. I swear to God, I didn't, I'm not making this up. I never even thought of such a thing. I'm trying to, I'm trying to figure out how to use it. it. It never occurred to me. This is funny. Oh my God. Okay. This is fun to do this laugh. Yeah. <laughs> he just tells one joke after another. That's what he does. Okay, that's he's already telling the next one, but I he's gonna I have to let my consciousness kind of loose or something. I think he's trying to tell me the one about running down the road. I probably didn't get it all right, but but um, but then he shows me a pipe, like you know the kind of ventilation pipes that are like a foot or two feet wide or sixteen inches wide, you know, in, in diameter that run along the uh, top. Uh, uh, it, you know, and then in offices, they'll put the cardboard or that soft stuff for the roof, the little squares of it. But, you know, in the, in the theater or the uh, bar or whatever the place is that he's doing this stand up, um, it's, it's running along the, you can see it. I would say it's visible, you know, but hanging from the ceiling somewhere. He's talking about stuffing something in the pipe. He says you got to be ready with the comeback. So he's talking about hecklers. He threatened to stuff them in the pipe. <laughs> but, um, oh, gosh, this is funny. Um, oh, you got to be ready with a plan. He said you got to be ready with a plan. Oh, 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 this is good. I never even thought of this. So he's showing me that being a good comedian, not only is the original joke, but then after you get that, like, down, then, um, okay, that, then there's this middle thing where, okay, so a lot of people, let's say there's a heckler, like, think of five heckle things drunk people might say. For each one of those, have a comeback already. Like, don't get upset and get flustered and go, oh my God, they're heckling me. He's not telling me that, but I'm just adding that. Okay, so he says, for each one of those, have a comeback already prepared ahead of time. You don't, it, I mean, 
And you could even go further. So that's like, that's one way of, you know how like if a musician was making his music more complicated. So I, that's pretty good for new comedians to think about. And then one time a heckler came on stage and it's like he tried to outdance me. He says, I don't want to go ahead of him and, and see what he's going to do. It's, Cause then I'm like, what did you get him to dance while he's drunk? Or I don't know. Um, um, it looks like when one if someone does something stupid like goes on the stage or something, you just stay calm and act, you know don't like react to. I mean, say heckle things, but not that's gonna make him punch you. But he didn't say that. He just said that. Okay, essentially he's just showing me you just stay calm and you know make it part of that because you know those guys are gonna come up and get him down pretty fast, right? Something like that. I think I added extra words or something, but it is along those lines. I want to hear another joke only because um, I think that feels good to laugh. It's not giving me another joke right now. Okay, so and then I'm gonna. It's up to him what he wants to see the spirit. Okay, John. I, I'm. I'll lay here and see what see what um else comes through. Swiss cheese. <laughs> it's like as if. It's almost like he's saying the government, but they're not the ones that make the cheese, but it's almost like if the government can't figure out one way or another to rip you off, they're going to make poke a bunch of holes, essentially poke a bunch of holes in your cheese or poke a whole bunch of holes in your, in your cheese and make you think it's special or something. A joke along these lines. It's not exactly right either because it's, um, but it's along those lines. I'm not saying these are jokes he already put out in public. I'm saying these are jokes he's telling me. It's like he's pra he's just telling me different jokes. Oh, he said to say he does jokes in <laughs> where he is. Like, yeah. Wherever he is, that's what he's doing. Which is right here. But, <laughs> you know, wherever he resides, he, he does shows still. That's what he wanted. He, he said at the beginning, but the fan was going super loud. So before I turned off the fan, that's what he showed, he communicated to me. If I, if I had planned this ahead of time. Okay, so he's showing me kind of like the 80s style of dressing. Now I don't know if he continued that dressing after it was out of style to look clownish or... But it's like, you know when they pleated the pants in the front on even guys, and it was like in the 80s, the Van Halen era or whatever. Um... But they're like black and white ch checker board look. Black and white. And, uh, you know, funny looking, kind of. And, um, no, he's like, what, you don't like my pants? <laughs> I said they were funny looking. Oh, oh my god. Okay, um, okay, no, I forgot again. See, I don't remember a lot when they show me in this, in this state of mind. I don't, it doesn't retain in my memory until I listen to it by, of the recording. Okay, so if it's important. Oh, the pants. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, so he's showing me these black and white pants. And I'm wondering, is he sending me a symbol of the Illuminati? <laughs> I think he's making a joke. I think they make me laugh every time they think it's a joke. That's the way he said it. He's making a joke about the Illuminati. That's why he has these pants. I don't know if he had them in his physical life or if he's just, that's an idea he has right now. Like that he's just saying to me or, or if he's just like has all kinds of jokes in his pockets and he's making me laugh. It's funny. Okay, so what? Am, well, I shouldn't ask questions. So if I start asking questions, it kind of bends energy a little. It's okay at the end, but it's like when you're forming a strong link, it's better just to let them keep giving you information. I mean, you could wonder stuff, but because I, for some reason I see a bathtub behind where he's he was doing the checkerboard pants, and then behind. I see, it looks like a bath, you know, and then in a, in a bathroom, I see the, you know, a bathtub, one of these little older style kind of bathtubs. 
And by that, I don't mean super old, I just mean, you know, it's not a one built for two or whatever. Okay. He's like, do you need to provide so much detail? <laughs> he's, he's, get, he's like, listen, Donna, you can't take everything personal. Let me give you some advice here. <laughs> the world's a cruel place now. Get over it. <laughs> like that. He's like, no, get over it. <laughs> He keeps trying to tell me some joke about the street because it's like now he's marching up the street. So each time he showed me the street thing, he showed me a different method of forward movement up the street. Marching, marching up the street. Car pulls over and says, what are you doing? He says, what do you think I'm doing? I'm marching up the street. Coward. You don't have something he's trying to get like challenge the guy to get out of his car and move up the street. He says I was going to jump, jump, jump over. No, he didn't say that. I'm going ahead of him, maybe. Let me let me just clear my mind and see. He's going, I was a pathetic loser, pathetic loser. He, hit, he kind of like hits the side of his head, but he's still on stage. Now he's wearing that little French beret looking hat. And, um, but he's joking. He's being sarcastic. It's part of some sort of joke. And then he's making... A funny, he's making a joke about one of these child kind of actors that he played a nerd in one of these like family comedy type of shows, Skeezer or something like that. So I've seen this Skeezer. And I'm wondering if Skeezer's passed because it feels like Skeezer's here. Or, you know, I might not be saying his name right because, you know, it's hard to get it exactly right. But you get the idea. I'm sure you know. If you're listening to this, you know who I'm talking about. That kind of nerdy looking kid with the, like, fluffy hair. And so what he's showing me, so he, he brings him out, like, he introduces him, like, oh, here, takes his hand, goes out. Here. Stop it! What are you doing, Rocky? And, um... Oh my god. I'm so sorry. I haven't to listen to the cutest bulldog on the planet. Oh, oh, it's not even... It's Rosie. Stop doing that. Don't do that. No. Okay, shh. Alright, shh. Okay, I'll let, let me see. Um, well, oh, must be passed. Um, okay, so, hi. It's so nice to meet you. Yeah, he said, do you mind if I try out my comedy routine on you? <laughs> yes, that'd be cool. Cool. Okay, so a teacher, I think it was like, sound like you said, a teacher, but then someone was following him home from school one day so it might be a teacher was following me home from school one day but i'm not 100 percent sure if there was a teacher and then someone or it's the same person i'm not sure and she said skeezer you're so funny in class i hate it when you interrupt but the kids are so lively after they get a good laugh and i think you can make a career out of it and that's how I decided to become a comedian. And I'm pretty sure this is the skeezer guy. It might be, I can't, I don't know his exact name, but it's something like that. Skeeter? Ske I don't know, something like that. Anyway, so that's what he sh says. It's like the other kids used to make fun of me, but then I learned how to um, like turn the tide with comedy or humor. It's like interchanging those words, comedy or humor. And I want to, it's like I want to tell all the um, young men in America that a little comedy will go a long way. A little humor in a situation. It's like we'll do a lot to see things over. It, it's not in really in words. It was just like in a, you could feel it, but it, 
you know, I'm, I'm, ad I'm putting that word onto that feeling. It's like if George Carlin hadn't brought him out, I, I, I would be like, is this, this guy must be deceased because uh, it's going to be super weird if I look him up afterwards and he's alive still because he's like right in front of, in front of me or to the side, or like to the right a little bit. But, um, He want, he's, 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 he's in a more little serious mood. Um, I would just try to get what he wants. Tell my family I love them. Tell my friends I care about them. He's telling different people he loves them. He cares very much about a mother and sister. But then I'm like, well, are they past or are they in their physical body or whatever? I'm not 100% sure. Either way, he he's he loves him. It it and it could be like not his mother. It could be a mother and her daughter. I don't. I'm not hundred percent sure. Cause I just get mother and daughter, but I don't know if it's his mother and daughter or a mother he was friends with and the daughter he was friends with. Like you know, seems like he had to have some kind of. I don't know, because it feels like he they take a piece of vein out of his thigh, or they do something to the vein in his thigh. I don't, I don't know what, like, I don't know what it is, because I'm not seeing the whole actual thing. It's just, like, kind of seeing, feeling like you're removing a vein in your thigh and putting it into somewhere else. He's telling me not to second-guess everything. <laughs> He's in my mind. Okay. He says, I appreciate your time, Donna. I won't keep you any longer. You take care. It's good to make a new friend. That's really all I had to say. As we said. It could be Weezer or something like that. I don't know. I'll figure out which guy. Um, I'll look up on old TV shows and, and make sure. I'm, I, I, I'll identify him because I can see his face. <laughs> I can see his face perfectly. Okay, so, um, that's him. Okay, I'll just wait here and see what Nicole else, else Nicole has planned. So she's telling me, and it could be for other people, because otherwise she'd probably tell me when I was just meditating rather than doing a recording. Um, she, she's, so I, I have my wedding ring and I occasionally wear it, but um, not that often, but she it's like she takes it off my finger and puts it in the palm of my hand and then kind of closes my hand on it, right over it. it. And then she's showing me about wearing it and she's like, no, like shaking her finger just, you know, mildly like, no. Um, I think I, I f have a feeling like there's going to be more and more, like, robberies and weird stuff. Maybe not right this second, but soon. You know, like, say, as the dollar goes on the slide and the inflation shoots through the roof. Um, nobody's saying that to me. I'm just explaining what I think the feeling is that she's giving me with that. I think she's, I mean, she's put, I don't know any other meaning for putting it in the palm of my hand. George Carlin says it's closing time. Because I was like, well, who's next? What about John Belushi? But then I was like, I don't know if, I, if I'm, you know, if I just want to rest now or, um, but maybe another time. Yeah, he's, he's, that's all folks. <laughs> he's done. He says, I just wanted to come in and say hi to you. Oh, we could do more. We could work again to get, like, we could do more work in the future. I'm, and then I'm saying we could get more done in the future. Because it's like telepathy, thought transfer. Um, that's excellent. Thank you so much. That was wonderful. That was funny. That felt good. Okay, well, I hope you guys enjoy this. I believe that was George Carlin. He has been around here like, um, a couple other times. And I was like, said, oh yeah, I want to do a thing, sure. And then I'm like busy doing something else. So that was real nice. That was, that felt really good. I hope you enjoy that.
All right, take care. All right.